We celebrate the Sunday of the Epiphany today, as I mentioned. The scriptural account of the Magi, the wise men, is not only a fact in history, but it can be applied to the life of the church each and every day. This day celebrates the reality of Christ the Savior of the world first appearing to the nations, the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, the Goyim, as the Jewish people call them, those that aren't Jews. So we too venerate the Christ with holy worship, along with the joy that entered the hearts and the souls of the three Magi when stirred by the sign of a leading of a, a new and mysterious star. They believed in this, and they fall down in the presence of the infant king of heaven and earth. The gift of God in the manger we celebrate. The revealing of God with us to the Gentiles we celebrate today, and of course we celebrate every day. The three wise men hadn't been taught by the prophets. They hadn't heard the foretelling of the Messiah. They hadn't been instructed by the Jewish law. Yet they came to acknowledge God as king from the far regions of the east. How much more will the church who has the prophets, the scriptures, holy tradition, the saints, how much more will the church celebrate this reality of God with us more clearly and more joyously as the prophet Isaiah's words from God are fulfilled? The Lord has laid bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations and all the nations upon earth have seen the salvation which is from the Lord our God and those to whom it has not been announced about him shall see and they who have not heard shall understand. Arise, shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Nations shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. The young camels of Midian and Ephah and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. When we see these magi, these three wise men who are devoted simply to worldly wisdom, as it were, they're far from belief in Christ Jesus, they're far from belief in the one true God, uh, for that matter. But something happens here. Out of the depth of that error, they are called to acknowledge the true light. And this is the amazing yet mysterious reality of God's grace, of God's uncreated energies permeating even the non-believer to come and see, to acknowledge the true light. Through their own worldly wisdom, they figure that, yes, this is the king of the Jews, the king of the Jews, meaning the big one, the only one true king of the Jews, and they follow the star, even though they don't know the whole story and have to ask about it. That's God's grace. That's God's uncreated energies working on the outside of all persons of this world and working within the soul of the baptized faithful. And what does it do? It leads them to adore this child who is the king of kings. They drop to their knees, we're told. They knelt down. Drop to their knees is what the Greek means. Fell down on their knees. And this threefold gift of the Magi is also offered by all who come to Christ with faith. And this same offering is repeated in the hearts and souls of all believers each and every day for that matter. For the person that acknowledges Christ as the King of Kings already has 
riches beyond our wildest imagination. The person that acknowledges and lives the reality of Christ as the King of Kings is already in Christ all powerful. The one that believes that the only begotten Son of God has united human nature with God's nature in him and confesses him and worships him. The reality is that even God the Father in no way is superior in majesty. We in Christ are given the majesty of God. We don't become God, but we receive the majesty and glory of God. How is it then that the things of this world don't pale in comparison to that reality? Well, for myself, I know the biggest reason. Uh, the Satan, the evil one, the tempter, Beelzebub, whatever you want to call him, uh, is still at work in those that listen to him. King Herod, for instance. And the person that sides with the will and the wiles of the evil one, as it were, impersonates him in his opposition to Christ. And that happens to this very day. The tempter and those that cooperate with him prepare ways and means to deceive the, even the believer's heart and soul, if that were possible, and our minds to focus on this passing world as having all the glory. To focus on this fleeting world and its charms and its riches, as St. Leo wrote so many years ago in Rome. For he sees that the power of the eternal king is invincible whose death has extinguished the power of death itself. And therefore, this is the evil one he's speaking of, therefore he has armed himself with all his skill of injury against those who serve the true king, hardening some by the pride that knowledge of the law engenders, debasing others by the lies of false belief, and inciting others to the madness even of the persecution of the church. Yet the madness of this Herod is vanquished and brought to nothing by him who has crowned even infants with the glory of martyrdom and has endured his faithful ones with so unconquerable a love that in the apostles' words they dare to say, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or want or persecution or hunger or nakedness or peril or the sword as it is written for your sake? We are killed all day long and we are counted as sheep. But in all these things we overcome on account of him who loved us. All of those things are overcome in him who loved us. Somehow, by God's grace, the mystery happens that the wise men, the magi, bring exactly what we need to worship God in spirit and in truth. We bring our gold. We bring our resources, our worldly gifts for the church. We bring frankincense, which is the incense of our prayers and our worship offered up to the heavenly kingdom. We bring myrrh, which means that we are even ready to prepare ourselves for burial, if need be, for Christ, for the will of God the Father. Why? Because all things of this world have been put under Christ's feet he is the Lord of all. He is the King of kings. And that power and that glory and that honor and majesty and might are available to those who live in faith and cooperate with the Holy Spirit. As we venture into the new year of 2020, the faithful and true church are fully aware, at least those who repent and cooperate with the Holy Spirit, 
that even if there are active persecutors of the church, even if those all disappeared, and all was as good as it was in the good old days, if the good old days were all that good, If it just went back to the way it was, some proclaim, everything would work its way out. Well, even if that were the truth, this in no way does away with the need of the faithful church in continued vigilance, guarding our senses, guarding our thoughts, guarding our words, guarding our deeds, opening our treasure chests for the King of Kings and the Lord and Lord. Why? Because Satan only changes his tactics. Doesn't matter the situation in life, the evil one's still at work. And he's got several thousand years of experience in his hellish trade. So this year, each day, we remember that Christ is revealed to all nations in the church. We are the body of Christ. We are the face and hands and feet and heart of Christ that people all around the world, all around our sphere of influence, experience. There is no other plan. Christ Jesus is the savior of all creation. And this fact, the church still proclaims in thought, word, and deed. What does remain is what shall we personally and corporately do about this? Reality, with God's help and God's power, do we really believe that we are personally and corporately Christ on this earth by grace? Or do we just believe in a white bearded fellow in the sky that someday we'll float away to be with him if we're simply nice? May we pray. Almighty God, let this year be yours, that we may please you. It is a new year, spotless. Let us not spoil it with our missing of the mark or the impurities of our living. Lord, be with us in every work we intend to do this year. Let us rejoice in all your deeds and say with St. John, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And as he has said, without me, you are nothing. Meaning, without him, we can do nothing that is good and true and eternal. Let this year, O oh Lord, be a blessed year. Put a smile on our faces and gladden our hearts. Let your grace emerge in our trials and help those who are tempted. Grant us peace and quietness of mind. Give those who are in need. Give to them through us. Cure the sick through us. And console the grieved through us. We do not ask you, God, only for ourselves. But we ask for all. Because all people are yours. You created them to rejoice in you. Then make them blessed with you. We ask you for the church. For your mission. That your word may reach every heart. We ask you for our country, for the world's peace, and that your kingdom may come everywhere. Let it be a fruitful year, full of goodness. Every day and every hour has its own work. Do not allow a futile moment. Fill our life with activity, work, and production. Grant us the blessing of a productive and holy toil. Let the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us in all our deeds, our words, and our thoughts. We thank you, God, for you have kept us until this hour. 
and granted us this year that we may live to bless you. Amen.